Imagine being the captain of a ship with thousands of passengers on board and hundreds of those who are sick and need life-saving attention, and you are denied access to ports across the globe because of a global pandemic. What do you do? What if you are one of those passengers? How would you feel? Would you ever get on a ship again? We're going to get into that and more because this is a real scenario and we're going to talk about it today. So let's get started. What's going on guys, Nathaniel here. Yes, we're talking about some cruise line companies today and how they are being affected by this COVID-19 outbreak. We're not going to really talk about whether you should buy or short these stocks, but instead we're just going to get into what is going on with them right now and what that means for the cruise and tourism industry in the future. So if you've been following the news at all, the cruise ship from Holland America, the Zandam, is currently trying to find a place to port their ship because they have thousands of people on board and hundreds of them are sick with flu-like symptoms and they have even had casualties on board. But because of the current pandemic, they are unable to port anywhere in the United States and they have also been pushed away by other countries because of the lack of resources available on land. And this is going to turn into quite a PR nightmare for the cruise industry because they have just taken one beating after another throughout this time, whether it's the Zandam or the Diamond Princess off the coast of California, there is nothing worse than being stuck in a ship with thousands of other people where a virus or any other kind of sickness really can spread very easily and it is causing some very serious repercussions for these companies. And this is causing quite an issue for three cruise lines in particular, all based in the United States. They are Carnival Cruise Lines, Norwegian Cruise Lines, and Royal Caribbean. All of these companies are headquartered in the United States and they are suffering from a very serious lack of support due to the way that they conduct their businesses. And we're gonna get into that, but first go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I post three times a week about personal finance, investing, and credit cards. Basically what I'm trying to do here is to inform you as my community about these companies and because they are publicly traded stocks, they are available for anyone to invest in. And so I'm just gonna weigh some of the pros and cons of what is going on right now with these companies and whether you should think about putting your money into the cruise industry. Now, because you're watching this on YouTube and I am not a personal finance guru or a stockbroker, take it with a grain of salt. This is mainly what I have been researching about these companies and I'm just trying to share it with you so you are able to make informed decisions if you are planning to invest in some of these companies. Now, as I said before, these companies are all headquartered here in the United States but they were specifically excluded from the $2 trillion economic stimulus bill because of the way that they run their businesses. Essentially, they flag their ships in other countries to avoid paying the U.S. tax rate. And some of these countries include Panama, the Bahamas, Liberia, among others. And what they're doing is they are paying less money to operate from these countries than if they would operate in the United States. So the wording of this stimulus bill specifically excluded companies that are based in the United States, but do not do the majority of their business in the United States. And this hit these cruise companies very, very hard. Another issue, as with the Zandam, because they are flagged in another country, the US government is saying that they do not have the responsibility to cover down on providing medical care and services to these people. So the Zandam in particular tried to dock in New York and New York, as you know, is the epicenter of the COVID-19 pandemic in the United States and they were turned away 
and a lot of ports in Miami, Fort Lauderdale, places like that have also closed their ports to foreign vessels because of the lack of capacity that they have to help people. So what do you do when the federal government is unable to support you and your profits are going to run dry? Well, Carnival Cruise Lines has secured credit for at least the near term, as well as cutting off all dividends and stock buybacks to help keep their company afloat. Now, I personally see a lot of issues with the cruise lines in the long-term future because of what I was saying before with the PR aspect of it. Sickness does run rampant through a ship. It's not the first time that a sickness has spread through a ship. Basically, you have a very dense, small city on a single vessel afloat in the ocean, and because people are so close together, there is a increased chance of spreading an infection or a virus or something along those lines. There have been issues of cholera outbreaks in the past, and because of the issue that the Zandam and other cruise ships are having with finding help at ports around the globe, there are going to be a lot of bad press and like a negative stigma surrounding these companies and that may actually turn people off to taking a cruise in the future. Not to mention all the people who are on that ship right now. What are the odds that they are going to take another cruise after this experience? And what happens when you get off of that ship and you go home and you're finally able to reunite with your family, you're going to tell them that it was your worst experience ever and you're probably going to scare your family and all your friends from ever taking a cruise again. So there is going to be a very negative perception surrounding these companies for a considerable time. Now, don't get me wrong. The idea of a cruise is great. All inclusive, tons of fun and games and pools and just a great experience all in one place for usually a very competitive price, something that you would not find at a resort on land. So I can see the appeal of a cruise ship, but after all that's gone on, I don't think that perception is going to remain the same. All right, guys, so I am on Weeble right now. If you don't have a Weeble account, I have a link in the description below when you sign up using that link, you will get two free stocks. One, when your account is successfully created and another when you make your first deposit. It is a very user-friendly program and I am going to show you just what it looks like by going in here and looking at these stocks. All right, so the first stock we are going to look at is Carnival Cruise Lines. CCL on the New York Stock Exchange. As of today, pre-market, it is looking at $8.80 a share. And I'm going to show you just what kind of beating it has taken over the last three months. So starting back in January, Carnival was trading at $51.31 a share. And as of today, April 2nd, it is trading at $8.80. That is an 82.69% decrease in stock value. And honestly, I think things may get worse from here. Now, as we keep looking, let's go to the five-year value of it. You can see that really over the last five years, it has maintained a fairly good and consistent value, but because of this outbreak and because of the lack of cruises that are going to be happening in the near term, that is just going to continue to beat down this stock. And honestly, I would not be surprised to see it drop to about five or six dollars a share before things start kind of evening out. It has really, really taken a beating and I don't know if this is the right time to get in. I will leave that up to you, but will it rebound? 
eventually it will. I think analysts are currently saying that this stock is a hold. So what that means to you is if you already own this stock, then hold on to it because you're going to basically lose all of your investment if you were to cash out now. But with that being said, it may be a good time to buy. Uh, do your research on it and uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Honestly, this is this is kind of unprecedented for this industry, at least since I can remember. And for such a steep drop off, um, it's really going to hurt and it's going to take them a long time to catch up from this. Our next stock is Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings. And this one is currently trading at $9.55 as of the 2nd of April. And we are going to look at that same three month period. And you can just see what has happened to this stock in that time period. In January, it was trading at $58.83 and it is currently sitting at 9.55, which is an 83.65% decrease in value, which is just a staggering, staggering change in this stock. And like I said, with Carnival, there is really something unprecedented about this. Over the last five years, this stock has performed marginally the same across Across the board, it does offer dividends. So that is one of the things that helps keep that stock price at a consistent level because shareholders are getting a payout from the profits that these companies make. Analysts also currently have this stock as a buy. So with that being said, be on the lookout for this. Do some more research. Make sure that you are making informed decisions when it comes to investing. Uh, I wanna make sure that you guys are making a profit and not losing money in the process. And that's the ultimate goal is to make money, to grow your wealth. And um, you know there may be an opportunity with these, but really time will tell as to what this stock does in the short term. And the final stock we're going to look at today is Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines traded as RCL on the New York Stock Exchange. It is currently trading at 2577 pre-market on 2 April. And we're going to look at that three month period. It started off January at $134.65 and it is currently trading at 25.77, which is an 80.7% decrease in stock value. So all of these companies have taken at least an 80% hit in share price since this whole COVID-19 has really gripped the world and taken a toll on a lot of industries. But the tourism and cruise industries are going to be hit very hard in the near term. And really, as this goes on into summer and when people are looking to take vacations, if they're unable to use a lot of these staples that people usually rely on to get away, then you're going to see this value continue to plummet and honestly, it's it's sad to see because I know it does provide a good source of entertainment and uh, just time to get away with friends and family. But at the going rate, I don't think the cruise lines are going to be operating at least until maybe fall. There's no way that they're going to be backing up and running normal operations by summertime and summertime is going to hit them really hard as well. So do some more research on them. I know I sound like a broken record, but I am by no means licensed to be giving this advice, but I do a lot of my own research on stocks that I'm interested in, and this one was too hard to pass up. I just wanted to get into what is affecting them right now. There's a lot of political and economic issues that are really really taken a toll on this industry. And because of that, they are looking more and more enticing to investors. But at what point do you say, yes, I'm going to buy? Or is there a real 
issue with the future of these companies. People need good outlets to take their families out on a vacation, and the cruise industry has really done that for a lot of families. Like I said, I'd be interested in doing it. Definitely no time in the near future will I be doing it, but with that being said, you know, I think they will bounce back eventually. They do have the finances secured to at least weather the storm in the short term. And as they look to the countries that they are flagged in, they may be able to get some kind of stimulus economically for operating out of those countries. Time will tell. I know that them not receiving any of that $2 trillion economic stimulus that the U.S. government passed is going to hurt them. But, you know, if you're not paying taxes in the U.S., then is there really an incentive for the U.S. to try to bail you out? And the answer is no. So you may see actually a shift in their operations in the future. Um, you know, when something like this happens, you kind of figure out where your alliances lie. And, you know, the U.S. government has been pretty good about bailing companies out in the last uh, 12, 13 years. And so you may you may see a shift in where they decide to operate their crews and their vessels from. All right. So that's all I have for you today. These are just my two cents on the cruise industry. All three of these companies are considerably down since the start of the year. And this is really, I think, going to continue into the summer and maybe even much longer because of this outbreak, as well as that stigma surrounding cruise ships. And honestly, do your own research and see what you think when it comes to investing in these companies. I am not certain on when the right time to pick these up are if you are going to invest in some of these, but just know that there's a risk and things may get worse before they get better. All right, guys, so that's all I have for you. Thank you for tuning in. Please like and subscribe if you have not already. I will catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.